In this video, we're going to go through eight examples involving parabolas in this particular form. And we're going to talk about how to graph them, how to find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, as well as how to complete the square and put the quadratic equation into these uh, two forms here. So let's dive into this video and you're going to learn how to work with these. The first thing we want to talk about is when you're working with parabolas or quadratic equations of these two forms, you want to pay attention to which variable is squared. So here you can see that y is squared, which tells us that the parabola is going to be opening to the right or to the left. If it's the x term that is squared, it's going to be opening up or down. Now, how can you tell if it opens up or down? Well, if the p-value is positive, it's going to open up, and if it's negative, it's going to open down. Same thing over here, if P is positive, it opens to the right. If it's negative, it'll open to the left. And what exactly is this P? Well, the P is the distance from the vertex to the focus, and that distance is also the same from the vertex to the directrix. So the vertex is actually halfway in between the focus and the directrix. Now, what exactly is a parabola? Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, it's the set of all points that are equidistant from a given point called the focus and a given line called the directrix. So what that means is like, say if I had a point like right here, and if I measure this distance to the focus, this distance to the directrix, that perpendicular distance, they should be the same. Now, as you go further and further out on the parabola, the distance to the directrix is gonna get longer, so is the distance to the focus, but those two distances are always gonna be congruent or equal to each other, so that's what it, technically is here, this parabola is a set of all points that satisfies those two uh, requirements there. So let's go ahead and do an example and I'll show you how this works. So this first example, we can identify the vertex by the number group with the x is going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex, and the one group with the y is going to be the y-coordinate, but the signs are going to be the opposite. See how it's x minus h and y minus k? So that means that our vertex is going to be at positive 1, not negative 1, and negative 3, not positive 3. So let's go ahead and graph that. 1, negative 3. There's our vertex. And notice this is x squared. That tells us the parabola is going to open up like this or down like this. In this case, because you can see this is negative, it's going to be opening down. And notice this quantity right here, this negative 8. That's our 4p. So 4p is equal to negative 8. If I divide by 4, p equals negative 2. So what that tells me is if I go down 2, that's my focus. So our focus here is going to be at 1, negative 5. And if I go 2 up, 1, 2, that's going to be the directrix, which is the line y equals negative 1. And now what you can do is you can graph this parabola if you just want to do a rough sketch, but if you want to get a couple of other key points, what's interesting is at the level of the focus, this chord here that goes through the focus is going to be 4p wide. Okay, so in this case you can see 4p is equal to 8, so if I go half of that, which would be 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, approximately here, and 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, approximately here, that gives me a width of 8, or 4p, and that kind of gives us a couple of key points on our parabola. So that's a pretty good sketch. Now, let's look at another example. Let's go to number 2. Now, this one, notice it's a y-squared type. That tells us that it's going to be opening to the right like this, or to the left. Notice that this p-value is positive, so that tells us it's going to be opening to the right. Okay, Our vertex is going to be... The number group with the x is going to be the opposite sign, that's going to be positive 4. And the one group with the y, that's going to be the opposite sign, negative 2. So it's going to be going 1, 2, 3, 4, down 2. This is our vertex, let's just label that with a v. And you can see that 4p is equal to 4, so that means that p is equal to 1, if I divide both sides by 4. Which means that I'm going to go right 1, there's my focus, and left 1, that's my directrix. This directrix here you can see is a vertical line, so that's going to be the line x equals 3, and our focus is at the point 5, negative 2. And now as far as graphing it, we know it's going to be opening to the right, and again, we know that this focal chord here, this width at the level of the focus, is going to be 4p wide. 
just label that 4p. 4p is equal to 4, so from the focus, I'm going to cut this 4 in half. I'm going to go up 2, put a point, down 2, put a point, and that just gives me a couple of points on my parabola. It kind of gives me an idea how wide or narrow it is, and we've got a pretty good sketch of our graph. Okay, for number 3 and 4 now, what we're going to do is we're going to write the equation of the parabola given some specific information. And let's dive into number 3. They're telling us that the focus is at negative 2, I'm sorry, the vertex is at negative 2, 5. So left 2, up 5. I always like to draw a sketch just to kind of help me visualize. And then the focus is at negative 2, 3. So let's label that F for focus. So what that's telling us is that Remember, the parabola always opens away from the directrix, like towards the focus. See, away from the directrix, towards the focus. So what that tells me is that this parabola is going to look something like this. Just a rough sketch. This isn't exact, but it's basically opening down, which tells me that if it opens up or down, it's going to be in this x squared format, right? And we can see that our vertex is already given here. So this is like our h and our k. So we can start off by saying x minus negative 2, which is x plus 2 squared, equals 4p, and then y minus the y-coordinate of the vertex, so y minus 5. Now, how do we figure out what this p-value is right here? Well, remember, the p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. So in this case, from the vertex to the focus, I can see that that's uh, two units here. So that means that this is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8, but because this is opening down, it's going to be a negative 8. And that's it. You've got the equation in this uh, standard form here. Now, for number 4, a little bit different information that's given. They're giving us the focus is at negative 2, positive 1. So let's label that F for focus. The directrix is at x equals 2. So that's a vertical line right here. And we know that the vertex is halfway in between the directrix and the focus, right? So let's see, halfway between, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Halfway would be 2, so this is going to put us right here, is our vertex. So let's write that down. Our vertex is at 0, 1, and it's opening towards the focus, away from this directrix, right? So this is going to be a y squared type, because it's opening left or right. But because it's opening to the left, our p-value is going to be negative. Now remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. That's 2 in this case. So we can see that p is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and write our equation. So y minus the y-coordinate of the vertex equals 4 times 2, which is 8. But because it's opening to the left, this is going to be negative 8. x minus the x-coordinate of the vertex. And we could simplify this a little bit. x minus 0 is just x, so we could say this is negative 8x, and on this side is y minus 1, the quantity squared, and that's our equation. Okay, for number 5 and number 6, we're still writing the equation, but we're given some different information from previously. Here, our number 5, we're given the vertex is at the origin, 0, 0, and it has a vertical axis and it passes through the point negative 3, negative 12, which is somewhere down here. So, so what this tells us when they say a vertical axis, this one has a vertical axis. So if you fold it over that axis of symmetry, it's going to match to itself. This one has a horizontal axis. If you fold it over, it's going to match to itself that way. So this one, because we know it has a vertical axis, it should look like this, where it's like this and like this. Okay, so that tells us since it's opening down, it's going to be in this x squared form. And our h and k are going to be 0 because the vertex is at the origin. So this equation basically condenses down into x squared equals 4p. Why? Okay, we don't know what the p-value is, but let's see if we can solve for it. And we can do that because we know it's going through this point negative 3, negative 12. So let's go ahead and put negative 3 in for x and negative 12 in for y, and let's go ahead and solve for this p-value. So what we can do is simplify here. This comes out to 9 equals negative 48p. Divide both sides by negative 48 to get p by itself. And you can see now p is coming out to uh, negative 3 sixteenths if we reduce. So we're going to take this negative 3 sixteenths, 
put it back in here, uh, which comes out to negative 12 sixteenths, which is negative 3 fourths. So our final equation, x squared equals negative 3 fourths y, would be our final answer for that one. For number six now, we've got a horizontal axis, a vertex at one negative three, which is right about here. Horizontal axis looks something like this, and it passes through the point two negative one, which is right here. So that tells me that this graph's gonna look something like this roughly. Okay, if I fold it over that horizontal axis, it matches to itself, and that means it's gonna be a y squared type. So let's go ahead and write our equation. We have y minus the y coordinate of the vertex, so that's gonna be y plus three squared, equals four p x minus the x coordinate of the vertex. We just need to solve for p. How do we do that? Well, we know a point that the graph is going through, two negative one, let's plug that in for x and y. So we have negative one plus three and two minus one. So this comes out to one times four, which is four p. This comes out to two squared, which is four. Divide both sides by four, you can see that p equals one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one back in for p here, and we've got our equation. So this is just gonna be y plus three squared equals four times one, which is four, x minus one and you've got it in the standard form. Okay, for number seven and eight, these last two problems, we're gonna do some completing the square to write this equation in the standard form. Then we're gonna find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and we're gonna graph it. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna analyze our equation and ask ourselves, is it the y squared term that's squared or is it the x variable that's squared, right? In this case, it's a y squared y is that are squared, not the x's. So that means it's gonna be in this form here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the y's on one side of the equation. So y squared minus eight y. I'm gonna add eight x to both sides. So this becomes a positive eight x if I move it to the right. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna complete the square. And the way you do that is you take this number in front of the y, divide it by two and square it. So you'd say negative eight divided by two is negative four negative four squared is 16. Now out of thin air, I'm adding 16 to the left side of the equation. To keep it balanced, I have to add 16 to the right side, okay? Now when we factor this, it's gonna to factor to y minus four, the quantity squared. Here I can factor out this leading coefficient eight, so that's gonna be x plus two. A quick tip here, when you're factoring, this number here is always gonna be half of this b value. So if it was positive eight, this would be positive four. If this was negative eight, it's negative four. Whatever this number is, it's gonna be half. And you can check your work by squaring, write this twice and FOIL it out, you'll get back the original. But now that we have it in the standard form here, it's easy to identify our vertex, which is gonna be at negative two, positive four. Remember those are the opposite signs. X is grouped with the X, Y is grouped with the Y. So negative two, four would put us right about here, okay? And our p-value, see how this eight is four p, so four p is equal to eight, divide both sides by four, p is equal to two. We know that it's a y-squared type, so it opens right or left, but because the p-value here is positive, that tells us it's gonna be opening to the right like this. So if I go right two, uh, which is gonna put me, let's see, at right here. So there's my focus. So that's focus is at uh, zero, four. And then the directrix, if I go two to the left, see this, this p-value is two. So if I go two to the left, that's gonna give me my directrix, which is at x equals negative four. So let's write that down, directrix x equals negative four. And then remember how we said that at the level of the focus, it's 4p wide, this focal cord. And in this case, we said 4p was equal to eight. If I cut the eight in half, go down four and up four, okay, at the level of the, at the, level of the focus here, so down four and up four. And that's gonna be about how wide our parabola is at the level of the focus. And that gives us a pretty good sketch of our graph. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, before we do this last example, if you like the way that I explain things and 
you'd like to help support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel, consider becoming a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, uh, you can help support the channel, and I really appreciate that. You can also purchase a t-shirt, a math t-shirt from my Teespring uh, store. You can look for the links uh, down below the video and uh, in the description. So let's dive into this last example. Uh, x squared minus 4x plus 12y minus 8 equals 0. Notice this is an x squared type. That means we're going to try to put it into this form here, okay? And we're going to do that by completing the square. So get all the x's on the left side of the equation. Let's go ahead and move everything else to the right side by subtracting 12y and adding 8. Remember when you switch from one side to the other, the signs are going to change to the opposite. And now to complete the square, we take this b value, okay, and you can do this work off to the side. You take the b value, divide it by 2, and you square it. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add out of thin air 4 to the left side, 4 to the right side to keep the equation balanced, right? Now when we factor this trinomial, it's a perfect square. And remember that little trick I showed you, it's always going to be half of that b value. So x minus 2, the quantity squared, is equal to that trinomial. We're going to factor out the negative 12, so that comes out to y minus 1. And now we have this in the standard form. So we can identify our vertex, which is going to be 2 comma 1. Remember it's the opposite sign, x is grouped with the x, y is grouped with the y. So let's go ahead and graph that. 2 comma 1 is right here, vertex. We know it's an x squared type, which means the graph's going to open up or down. Because this is negative, we know it's going to open down like that. 4p is equal to negative 12. So if I divide by 4, p equals negative 3, which means I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. That's our focus, which is at 2, negative 2. And our directrix, if we go up 3, 1, 2, 3, this is the line y equals 4. So let's write that down, directrix y equals 4. And then at the level of the focus, we know that it's going to be 4p wide. Remember this focal chord? p we said was 3, 4p is 12. If I cut 12 in half and go 6 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's a point. 6 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's a point. This kind of gives us a rough idea about how wide the parabola is at the level of the focus. Of course, it keeps getting wider as you go further and further down, but that gives us a pretty good sketch of our graph. So great job if you're able to follow this. And if you want to see more about graphing conic sections, meaning parabolas like we did here, as well as ellipses, hyperbolas, circles, I put a comprehensive video that I did right there. Follow me over to that video. We'll get some more practice and we'll learn about how to graph other conic sections in addition to parabolas. I'll see you over in that video.